Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. In today's video, we're continuing our discussion on being an Airbnb host. If you're new to this channel, you can check out my previous videos where I share how you can convert your current property into an Airbnb. Today's video assumes that you already have your Airbnb started. And we are going into discussion now of a very sensitive matter. This has nothing to do with about the preparations or the operational aspects of your Airbnb, but this is a very crucial part. You know what I'm talking about, guys, and we're talking about reviews. Yes, good reviews are in the lifeline of having a healthy Airbnb. Unfortunately, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much preparation and details that we go through, there are still times that we, unfortunately, end up getting a bad review. In this video, we'll cover what to do with these bad reviews. Yes, the best remedy for this, of course, is not to get a bad review at all. But I know sometimes, to the best of us, this still happens. No matter how much we try to avoid it, we just end up having guests that unfortunately don't agree with us on how we run our place. And there are just instances that we can't avoid. Noise from the neighbors, internet being down, PLDT, Globe, Sky Cable Converge. Thank you very much for making life much easier. So you've gotten a bad review, or maybe you're anticipating one. What do you do with these things and how do you keep your Airbnb healthy amidst this negative publicity? The good thing with bad reviews is that most of the time, you can actually anticipate them coming. You know the reservations wherein some things just definitely didn't click right. So again, what you should do is anticipate these bad reviews. And one thing that you have to remember about reviews is that you actually have two weeks to write them. Let's go back to the basics of Airbnb hosting. A review only gets posted once you've also posted a review for the guests as well. So first things first, when you're anticipating a bad review, do not make a review of that guest right away. What you should do is to maximize those two weeks. Those two weeks would actually be a grace period that Airbnb gives us as hosts. So if you're anticipating a bad review, make sure that you make the most of those two weeks since you already have a bad review coming make sure that you go a little extra for the guests that are following. Really try to get a good review from that next guest because here's another tip about how reviews work. Newer reviews get displayed on top first on your page. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes older reviews still get posted on the top of your page, but generally speaking, newer reviews would get posted on top of your page. So again, within that two week period, make sure that you try to get a good review that will more or less try to bury the bad review that's coming. This is not to trick anyone or other guests that would be coming in. But really, these are just part of the rules of the system. And this is how Airbnb tries to help hosts recover from a bad review. All right, so that's how you make use of the two-week system. But sometimes, bad reviews just happen to come out of nowhere. Sometimes you've had a good dealing with a guest and you thought everything was perfect, but then, you get a bad review out of nowhere and you're just caught by surprise. In these cases that you couldn't anticipate that bad review, of course what you can do is just really recover from it. Try to get a good review again from the next guest that's coming in. Just the same principle, but this time you're not able to bury it right away. Airbnb also gives us the opportunity to plead our case, to explain what's gone on, to give a public reply. On our page listing, we are able to give not really a rebuttal or not something that's gonna be defensive, but just trying to explain your point, try to be calm, try to be objective on how you can prove to future guests that what the guest is saying is a one-off incident that it's not supposed to happen again. Be very understanding and even apologetic so that guests will see that you are intent on improving the guest experience as an Airbnb host. And lastly, of course, what you should do would be really just to learn from these bad reviews. So really at the bottom of it, bad reviews are there because there's something that we can improve on as Airbnb hosts. And what I've shared earlier is really trying to control the bad publicity, the bad PR that you get from bad reviews. But ultimately, what we need to do would be really adjusting what's gone wrong during the stay of that bad review and really try to tweak things, try to prepare for contingencies that you may not foresee, double-checking certain areas that you may have missed, 
Again, there are a million things that could go wrong. It's hard to really prepare for each one. But for those common ones, we really can learn from our bad reviews and really trying to help the guest experience have a better stay at our place. Again, if you're interested in being an Airbnb host but don't have the time, I do offer my services. So if you're interested, click on the link below or this link that's showing right now. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. No pressure, really just exploratory talks. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy Airbnb hosting.